Test, test, test. Someday I'll have this figured out, folks. I promise. I'm working on it. Okay, enough fooling around. Let's do what we're here to do, which is another short video. 20 minutes, a half hour maybe. And wrong one. And uh, let's go to the video tape here. We, we don't need this today so much because it's... It's, uh, we're not talking about anybody else too much. So, who cares? We're going to talk about this as advertised on our thumbnail. And what is this thing? This is a brief overview of what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I call it light pumping. We can put it in, we can call it anti-gravity and big air finger quotes with irony clouds around it and whatnot but uh <clears throat> i made this little thing that's a quick overview um i think it might be helpful to just discuss it uh, some of it's just going to be reading right off the thing and me agreeing with myself you know how, how interesting is that but i may con hey i'm going to comment on some of it i did a run through and it might be okay all right, so, oh, the question is, how do UAP or UFO, whatever it is this week, how do they move? And there's the little thinking guy. And uh, so our big capital letters there is light pumping for the image, uh, Google images and stuff. So we are deterministically absorbing and emitting light to create a bubble. Effectively, a large gravity looting inertia ignoring photon like cloud to propel mass we're gonna put a flying saucer we're gonna scale up a little atom uh so it will you know which can float freely because it's got light moving through it we're gonna be talking about hydrogen again uh and we're just gonna do it writ large what if your uh your spaceship or your uap is covered with these things like a uh, Tic Tac looks to be. Look at that glistening. Look at that shimmering. We are going to pull and push the mass equivalent spectrum, which means depending on which kind of physics you're using, you can say, well, it's not thrusting. Well, you can, yes, it is. If you say a photon is mass equivalent, which, hey, don't take my word for it. I copied that from Albert Einstein. Um, then I say, uh, comma, the light is the ambient median. Yeah, it's everywhere except in solid material. And it's even in there, but I don't see how we're going to move through that. But yes, air, water, outer space is mostly light. What's in outer space? It's light. It's that cold temperature. Air's got plenty of light in it. So does water. Um, so we can use that for thrust and momentum. If you want to use Newton, you want to use Einstein, I, I don't care. We're pumping light like a submarine pumps water. That's my little analogy. It's propellantless and continuous manipulation of mass in a gravitational field. All right, so you're thrusting with light instead of uh, mass like you do with a rocket and you blow out the gases, which is a little tiny mass and explosions caused by light anyway. Your rocket is a thing that's, you know, temporarily, it's mostly, it's, a, it's moving light. It's partially moving light. It's mass and moving light in a, the same body, quotes again, uh, you know, just for until it blows out. So it's not all just the thing losing mass, because if it was losing it too slowly, then it's not going to move. It's not going to budge. So the next line is... Call it extreme buoyancy or floating, in quotes, if you must. Read the links. Ask. Yeah, okay. If you want to dumb it down to buoyancy, I'm fine with it. You got to take that and optimize it. It's, it's another property of matter, just like all the ones you learn. And, uh, you know, if you take a class in materials engineering, which I had to, I like that class. And... Um, you know, you learn, you know, I'm mad. what is like we're in Pittsburgh, right? Or I was at the time. So, you know, they use metal for a lot of uh, analogies fragile, brittle, 
I, I forget them all. I, I memorized them at one point, but you get the idea. Elastic, inelastic. There's a whole. Uh, there's not that many of them, but uh, let's. You know, why can't we do it with buoyancy? Why can't we optimize buoyancy? We do it a little bit with a hot air balloon. Thank you, Montgolfiers. And, uh, you know, with blimps and airships and the like, I'm saying you step it up. Up the game. Up the game and you got a flying tic-tac. Read the links, ask. Okay. Yeah, I'm on Twitter and uh, you can ask in the comments and all that stuff. So, I go on to sell this thing. I say it's falsifiable. Okay, scientific stuff has to be falsifiable. You can prove that it's wrong. Okay, this is one of my first things that was uh, on the internet, uh, I guess six years ago, I had enough guts to put my first little thing out here. And that was this thing. And, uh, you know, I try, how do I sum it, you know, uh, what a nutcase going on the internet and trying to push anti-gravity or something. Flying cars, spaceships, goofball stuff. Well, how, how do you how do you put it simply? And it, it it just came out. Light pumped through matter reduces the effect of gravity. That's your sales pitch, I, I guess. This is your first slide on your Silicon Valley deck. Then what happened? Okay, so it's falsifiable. You need that for the. Karl Poppers and the scientists and whatnot. Now, there might be some exotic matter and case and scenario. And I'm talking about pumping light, not absorbing it and sitting there because we know it's going to gain mass. I'm saying do what I say and it can't, uh, it can't be, uh, it cannot be falsified that, I don't know, I can't think of any light pump through matter reducing Effect, the effect of gravity, where that's wrong. How is that wrong? The, the phases of uh, matter prove it's solid. Add some more light heat. You know, radiation we're talking about with light here. You add, you know, you add some heat and it becomes a liquid. So it's, it's not as uh, affected by gravity or inertia, which is another thing I keep forgetting to mention. Because that's a big thing with these UFOs and uh, where we're supposed to be headed here. And you add even more, it becomes a gas. It's not only uh, ignoring inertia, it's ignoring gravity. So let's go back. And uh, now that we're unfalsified, at least, you know, uh, no one has taken this challenge on yet, probably because they think I'm a nut, which is fine. So it's... It's a proposition that can be simplified, and uh, I don't know. That might be enough uh, for some people if they really think about it. But, you, you know, it's hard to get around that, what you learn in school. And I had, it took me a long time too, so, but I think I did. So, light matter interaction causes gravity to be mitigated, as in nature. Yeah, we're copying nature. All right, that's... There's no shame in that. You can science it up all you want. How about we just do it just like a child can see? Does that work? Based in logic and observations, science confirms science is inferior to reason. Very easily observed in graduated anti-gravity, inertia-defined phases, solid, liquid, gas. I think I just ranted about that. Simple and intelligible. Logical and demonstrable, achievable and inevitable. Okay, I'm trying to sell this, folks. Give me a break. I'm bragging, or I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm shining it up. Prototypes not needed for concept. Wow, you're going to sell this with no prototypes. Good luck. Well, I have archetypes. They're better. Okay, it already exists. What I'm saying is the same thing behind a cloud. That water in, that was in the puddle this morning is now in the sky. Why is that? Water molecules are heavier than air. What's the difference? Well, buoyancy, you'll say. Well, why? It's a gas. Well, why? All I did was ask why one more time, and you get light moving through the system. Easy. Balloons do it. Airships do it. 
hot air balloons, and now you got the UAP themselves popping out of the woodwork, supposedly. I've never seen one. Um, you know, the, the federal government's saying it, okay? I don't know. You make the call. Some of you people have seen these things. And uh, every single observable is utterly predictable. Yeah, that's, that's one of my selling points. There's a web page I made about that. And, um, you know, when this thing came out on TV, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm going to say I wasn't surprised. That sounds glib. I was very surprised. But there was nothing, um, uh, nothing to it that was surprising, if you understand what's going on or think you do, like I do. And uh, am I repeating myself here? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, the next line says, advanced technology and engineering, but within reach, can be started now. That's what I'm saying. This is not... Um, 22 seconds. <clears throat> this is not uh, totally pie in the sky. I don't think it is. I think it's achievable, feasible, all those kind of things. Um, yeah, it doesn't just needs traction. But it's right. It's, it's inevitable. Uh, sooner or later, it's going to happen. Uh, in the meantime, I think it should. So I'm going to push it until it, you know... Until it either does or I die. How about that? Uh, let's see. Let go of the past. Embrace the simplicity. Okay, I'm, it's like I'm selling you a car here, but it's an idea, all right? Sounds a little corny, though, huh? By contrast, light pumping does not require... Well, before we skip down to the compare and contrast... I have some other uh, windows open here for some reason. Now, yes, this is the light bubble concept up close. I just did a video on that. You should see a video on my page with that drawing on the uh, thumbnail. And you might want to look at that. You probably have already, I, would, I, I imagine. I don't know. And what we're trying to do is achieve this. This is our light bubble here. This thing tells us, you know, how it's made up close, up close and personal in detail. Um, and this, you know, you want to scale that. There's another Silicon Valley word. Make it scalable, scale it up, which is what we're going to, that's all we're going to do. It's easy to make a hydrogen thing fly, a hydrogen atom fly. All you do, you know, to make this 47-foot thing with two guys in it or whatever it is, a computer, uh, you know, you just put, put these atoms in, across every single point on the thing, every single point. Sure, yeah, you know what that is? That's buoyancy, enhanced buoyancy. Of course it's going to go up and down at the speed of whatever it is, and blow your doors off and make right turns and left turns, 90 degrees, whatever it is. And of course, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what else? I opened another one. Oh, yeah, that's for later. That's just for laughs. That's what happens when it's a rainy day around here. You make something like that. And uh, let's go back here. And to finish comparing and contrasting, I wonder how many minutes we are in. I have no feel for this stuff yet, folks. So, by contrast, light pumping does not require, and here I'm comparing with the competing theories around this thing, these UFOs and the future of propulsion and whatnot, and I don't know which one's right or wrong. I just know, uh, you know, what I think my two cents, okay? I, for, for personally, I think I'm right completely, but, uh, you know, how often does that happen in life, folks? All right, so light pumping does not require gravitational wave generation. Now, that's the kind of Bob Lazar thing um, that, you know, that's what I associate it with first. 
And you might be able to do that. Make gravity with some sort of element we don't know about. I think it's highly unlikely. Okay? That's just my opinion. But this thing does not require that. And that's an exotic thing that if it exists at all, it's way out there. You know, these, uh, if these people are visiting us, they're roughly our age. They're roughly, you know, they can see that we're going to be there soon. So, uh, you know, if they're generating gravity waves, I think they're going to, you know, I hate to anthropomorphize like animals or God, okay? You can, that's off limits, you know. You can do it a little bit, I guess. But these aliens, if they're like, uh, if they're interested in us, they're probably similar, you know, we'll do it a little bit. I'm saying if these people know how to make gravity waves, they are not interested in ants in this anthill. All right. Gravitational lensing. All right, that was a popular thing. Well, it's on the internet. It got a lot of hits, a lot of attention. How are you going to do that? Okay. It's just... It's a, you know, it's... It, the idea works, but how are you going to create all that mass? You know how much mass that takes. you got to... That's like... You know, I don't know that you're going to do that in a 47-foot gizmo... You're going to make it weigh 10,000 suns plus the weight of Betelgeuse and seven atomic reactors. You know, come on. I'm trying to be feasible. That may be, you know, if it's possible, anything's possible to me. And it might be possible. I don't know. I'm not a physics PhD. Uh, maybe they have a way, you know, I'm not claiming to know, know uh, how they're going to generate Planck lengths. You know, maybe, sure. Okay, entangling or otherwise interacting with planck size gravity or space-time with highly speculative methods and materials. We don't do that here. We take stuff that exists now that we can make, graphene, graphene, uh, you know, screw around with bismuth if you want. We'll get there. But let's get started with something realistic that we can do. That's this. Um, how are you going to make a metamaterial that interacts with plank lengths? Like I said yesterday, here's a tiny metamaterial. It's about as small as you're ever going to get. There's a hydrogen on it, a very small piece of small element. I said mass yesterday. That's wrong. It's not the smallest piece of mass. But it's very small. And there's galaxies of gravitons in their galaxies. These things say they're going to reach out and grab them you know, piece by piece, or some of these other theories, some of them do, at least my understanding of them. And I, believe me, <clears throat> you know, I'm not going to go uh, die on the hill of my understanding of what other people are saying. But a graviton is tiny. And I'm sure the vacuum's even tinier because that's what they're sitting on. So if you think you can reach out with one of those, well, my, you know, my, the first analogy that popped in my head when I was trying to wrap my brain around it was, it's like trying to cut God's nose hairs with, on God's your size, tem temporarily, with galaxy-sized scissors. All right, you want to put, some, put that up your nose and rip, you know, first off, it's just not going to fit. So don't even think about it anymore. That was my message to myself. But that could be wrong. Okay, I don't require that. So this doesn't require it. We're talking about a, a, a souped-up balloon, okay? It's not that exotic. I'm not asking for much here. And I don't require hand-waving obscurantist jargon. Obscur obscurantist. Not a word I use that often. Assumption-loaded equations or superfluous complexity. We don't need it. We don't need wild speculation. We don't need theories to come. We don't need facts not in evidence. We don't need theories not in evidence. Elements to be named later or Manhattan projects. This is the kind of stuff, you know, I see on UFO Twitter and on the YouTubes and all that stuff, and even television. And, you know, 
just dimensions and all that stuff. You know, maybe. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Who knows? Pardon me. I'm gonna take a sip. <clears throat> uh, but I don't think uh, you know. I don't think so. And we don't need any of that stuff. And we don't need next point massive amounts of energy. Like, sure, it'll warp space. All you have to do is blow up Jupiter and the gas tank. Not just have that weight, but blow up every single atom in there. You know, it's, it just, it makes my head hurt. When I see a balloon floating by and know that th these UAPs are nothing more than that. In my, you know, well, like I said, scaled. And we don't need negative mass. Okay, that's, a, that's sort of a, a thing that might exist. You know, we, we might we might be using. You know, it may be argued that it's well, it it's acting like negative mass over time. If you do the derivative of the derivative, yeah, okay, I agree with you because it's losing mass equivalent quicker than your acceleration uh, rate of your local gravity field. So yeah, it's gonna it's, it will fall up, but is that negative mass in the sense that they mean? They mean, and you know, nah, no. We don't need that, that headache. We don't also. We also don't need tautologies. Like it's already going the speed of light. Somebody came out with a new warp of a warp that's already going. You get around going the speed of light by already going the speed of light. And then you add that to it, so then, you know, I suppose you're going faster than that, which, you know, I think I got, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you used to have to sit in the corner for in grade school for being, a, being too clever, okay? Don't need that stuff. Not for this. Fun to think about. I'm glad they are the one thinking about it. It's not a waste. At some point, something's going to move quicker than the speed of light, but not because of a tautology. It's going to do that, I think, if it can grab onto Planck lengths, which I think is difficult, if not impossible. But let's keep going. Uh, we also do not require preconditions like it's already accelerating. This is not a meant to be a slight at some of these... Uh, theories that require that. I think if you add some of that to the, to what I'm saying, um, you might you might get uh, get some positive results. All I'm saying is it doesn't need a precondition like that. Uh, some of those ideas, like the M drive and the uh, QI, they make sense to me. I did not as much as this to me. This is intuitive to me. That's if I, once I wrap my brain around it, it falls right back out. I'll, I get it for like a minute, and it falls back out. But I do remember that uh, yes, if it's already accelerating, those things uh, they make some sense. So we're not sliding that. We're just saying we don't need preconditions. We start out with a piece of you know. Uh, uh, graphene, graphene, and make graphene out of it, and then you, you wave, uh, put it in an electric field. It flash the lights on and off. You shoot a cat laser pointer at, you know, you mess around with it, and you're going to see that you're controlling the uh, flow of electrons through the um, graphene, which is going to change the mood of the attached hydrogen to absorb or or uh, emit or do nothing in some cases and um, and that's how you start controlling buoyancy um, more efficiently you get that you know you can see it I can see it in my mind's eye wrap, wrapped around these tic tacs just waves of electrons going around telling the thing Okay, absorb light over here, spit it out over there because you need to make a 90 degree turn over Santa Barbara Island 
or Santa, Santa Catalina, Catalina and get, get out of here. Okay, you've teased these guys enough. Let's go. So, what was that about? Okay, preconditions. We don't need that. And the last thing we don't need is suspension of disbelief. Merely a deeper look and acknowledgement of previously overlooked root causation. In other words, what's causing the, the buoyancy? What is it? It's just energy levels of light in objects that can, can take light, which we can see in nature, and we can primitively um, use with balloons and airships. But we take that and when we, we get serious about it and we start coating, um, coating gizmos with it. Where is that thing? Like this. There we go. This is supposed to show that every point on that thing ha has this uh, light pumping capability. And you can, you know, of course you have to control it some way. It's going to be complex, but easy. How does that make sense? Just a lot of work ahead of you. A lot of bookkeeping. A lot of uh, engineering. I'll just call it that. And, uh, you know, sooner or later, you're up there with these guys. Taking a sip again. This is no... Uh, and the reason it looks like that is because it's blinking on and off. It could be sitting right there. It's just sitting there, but it looks like that because it's revving his engine to uh, go the other way away from you. So, to finish up, it seems like about 20 minutes. I don't know. I can't tell. Oh, well, the clock says it might be. I don't know. Which clock is that? Um... Well, we finish up with some sales pitches here. Ready for the inevitable yet? Or are you still content to stuck in the nobody else is saying a comfort zone? Yes, let's go say plasma sheath because everyone else is saying it. Let's say warp drive because everyone else is saying it. That's fine. But ultimately you're going to come around. Because, closing line here. Yes, it actually is this obvious when framed correctly. Either that or I'm out of my mind. That's fine. No harm done. One more tinfoil hat in the mix. Oh. So, that's what I think. Am I right? I don't know. You tell me. You make the call. You make the call and let's wind down out of here with a little outro.